Uh, we just got two motherboards. These are the Asus Z170-AR. Both of them came here for bent pins on the CPU socket. Customer brought two and he still has more to bring. Uh, let's start with this one here. Let's take a look at the socket to see what's going on. Usually when you look at the socket, if you tilt it back and forth, you should be able to physically see a discoloration in the way the pins look. Like now, if I'm doing this, I see discoloration in many areas. This area here, the area next to it. We do not know how many damaged or bent pins we have. So uh, this can only be done under a microscope. Very difficult to see it even under a magnifier. Let's take a look at the board under the microscope to see what's going on. Uh, what I want to look for is a mismatch in pattern. A mismatch could mean that we have a bent pin or a damaged pin. Like for example here, what's this? So we're going to just do it step by step. We're going to keep moving the board up. I found one right here. See how that pin is bent sideways? It's touching the other pin, which is this one here. This can create a short circuit. When you put the CPU on top of the socket, the CPU is going to press on those pins. And this pin may press on that pin, and they're going to short out. When they short out, they're going to cause issues. The computer may not turn on, or you're going to have issues with the memory, or you're going to have other issues. So let's slowly move this pin to the side here, while being extremely careful. These pins are extremely fragile and they can easily break. So we have to be as gentle as possible. We do not want to overdo it. We just want to make it point the way that all those pins are pointing. So this is done. So far, so good. This one does not look good. You see how it's overlapping the other pin? Now, this is, this could be a very tedious process. It depends on how many pins we have bent on the board or how many damaged pins there are. On this socket, I found one area that was discolored, so I'm thinking that it could possibly just be this area that we have to fix. We want to make sure nothing is overlapping, nothing is touching. I want to use another tweezer with a slightly bigger tip. That way we can easily move the pin rather than the pin slipping from the fine tweezer. Yeah, look at this one here. Again, we have to be extremely gentle and careful because this pin can break very easy. So we have to treat it with respect. Everything else is looking good so far. Just have to look at all areas of the board. Maybe a little bit here, a little bit there. A good microscope is most definitely needed for this job. This side is good. Mm. 
See how that pin is overlapping this pin? You have to make sure your eyes are 20-20 because you can easily miss an overlapping pin. Everything looks good, and I think we already did the section. Okay, so board number one is done. We'll test it after we finish board number two. So let's put this one on the side, and I have the CPU here also. We'll put it on the side for now, and let's work on this board. This side is looking good. I do not think we're going to have too many bent pins with this board. Everything looks aligned. No change in pattern. I do see one here. I do not know if you spotted that one. And if you're wondering how much I'm charging the customer for this job, it's $85 per board. Uh, this one is bent inwards. Uh, I do not think we should tamper with this one. It's better to keep it that way than to have a broken pin. We'll bend it up slightly like this. Anything else? Okay, so we have this one here with a broken head. It may still make a connection. We do not know if this one is a connect or no connect. It may not be even used on the socket. Now we can look up the layout diagram for the socket and we can tell exactly if this pin is going to be an issue or not but right now there's nothing we can do for that pin anyway we'll test to see if the motherboard will turn on i mean i've seen a lot worse we've done a video on youtube before maybe about six seven months ago with a very bad socket pins were bent all over the place. What happened is customer tried to clean up the thermal paste on the CPU and the napkin got caught up on the pins. When he snatched the napkin, everything went all over the place. I don't think that's the case here. And that's it, we should be all good. I'm gonna grab a power supply and just run through these quick. As long as the board turns on, that's all I'm concerned about. Let's turn the power supply on. And we do see the light on the board here, right over here. Now, since we do not have a power switch, we have to manually turn power by connecting two pins together with a tweezer. So the board turned on. I do feel the heat on the CPU. We do not have a fan here, but the board turned on. The CPU is about 119 degrees. The motherboard turned on and it's working. Let's go ahead and test the other motherboard. Now CPU getting hot indicates 
that the motherboard turned on. This is not a full bulletproof testing. This is just to see if the board will turn on. Customer will test this at his own convenience after he plugs his RAM and everything else. We did a very good job and there's nothing more we can do. So hopefully this is gonna be 100% functional for the customer. For this one here, it does come with the fan. So I have the fan plugged in. Let's take the CPU out of this board and plug it into this board that we're gonna test. <laughs> CPU is right over here and it's very, very hot. We can see how this fan is on also. So that tells us the motherboard is functional and that's it. We're gonna call the customer to come and pick up. I hope you enjoyed the process of bending, unbending pins. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click on that bell icon next to the subscribe button if you want to be notified when we have a new video. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.